supposed to be as easy as one, two, three. But let me ask you this question. How many times have you washed your hands today? Yes, we learn as children that good hygiene is important, but there is reason to believe that that lesson hasn't been clear enough. Earlier this year, they did a formal study. I think Ministry of Health, along with Carrick and PAHO, I think that's where the funding was from, um, interviewed households with patients or people who had had um, diarrheal illnesses. And it mimicked that. It showed that full 50% were viral, mostly rotavirus. Um, second on the list was parasites, surprisingly to me, because um, I had thought salmonella or the bacteria would be more prevalent, but surprisingly it was parasites. And the parasites are usually spread through yeah, fecal matter, poor hand washing skills. Third on the list would then be salmonella and other bacteria. And, and those are also um, still a matter of bad hygiene as well. Yes, all of them, viruses, bacteria, uh, parasites. But um, it does show that, yes, we do mimic the rest of the world. If you're still not convinced, doctor challenges you to consider how many times a day you touch your face, specifically your eyes, nose, and your mouth. This is precisely how viruses and bacteria are spread. My grandmother, Miss. Haruna Malanza, she's passed away by now, but she asked me a question once, what is the most dirtiest part of your body? I said, uh, well, you know, your butt, and she said, yes, what's the second most? So I thought about it, and I said, I'm not sure, Granny. She said, your hand. So I said, why? She said, quite perfectly right, you touch a lot of stuff. Once you touch your nose or your eyes, it's a conduit to your body any opening, any orifice. When the diarrheal illnesses would start to go up in numbers, um, and they get their reports from all the health centers, countrywide, and the hospitals, you'd notice the wash hands commercials would start to come on television. So it shows that they're on top of the game, they know when to put it on. But yes, we're woefully short when it comes to teaching it, not only to healthcare professionals, but to the, the population at large. In fact, Proper hand washing should not only be a priority for the general public, but is absolutely crucial for healthcare workers, as it is a vital part of keeping hospital acquired infections, like the now infamous Enterobacter cloacae, down to a minimum. Dr. Eck has just recently spearheaded a workshop at the KHMH on this very topic. At KHMH, in order, as I, I have to advertise, that it's my hospital. We, um, we were invited and it is now a mandatory workshop that all healthcare workers have to attend at least once for the year. The infectious disease nurses um, sit you down and they have certain um, videos that you watch and then they actually teach you about your hand washing skills. Most importantly though is it's, a, it's become a culture at our hospital where if I am noticed to not wash my hand in between patients. The nurse or an intern or even the janitor in the ward could look and say, Doc, remember to wash up your hands before, or they could stop me. And it is no part of our culture. We're starting to make it a part of the culture. And that simple maneuver actually decreases um, bacterial transmission significantly. Healthcare workers should wash their hands after just about any and all contact with patients. Now with us, our hand washing skills is um, a little bit more intense. So what they call it are the moments that you should wash your hands. And there are five in all. Before you touch a patient, after you touch a patient, after you do a procedure to put in a line or an IV, after you touch the um, solution, so let's say you take blood or you take a sample of urine. And then the last one is after you re remove yourself, even if you don't touch the patient, but you touch the bed or the bed rail, then you have to wash your hands before moving on to the other patient. So what is the proper way to wash your hands? It requires very little. Um, all you need is potable water, you need some soap, cheap, and it is effective because if it's done the right way, then you elim eliminate a lot of the bacteria that lives on your hands. Wet your hands thoroughly. You put a, say a little two squirts of the hand soap in your hands. It's, the, 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 the bars of soap are fine, but the hand soap is, is better. Um, you lather your hands properly, back to front, you cover the back. 
um, cover the palms, you wash each finger individually, and then you rinse, and then take the linen, they, they, they actually say paper more than the linen because the linen can get uh, bacteria on it. So you take the disposable linen, your dry hand, then you cut off the knob, the, the water supply, and then you, you walk away. The length of time, they say, should be the same amount of time when you sing um, Happy Birthday to You song twice in your head back. Works out to about 10 to 20 seconds. Um, so do all of this motion throughout the time. And if you do it as simple as that and effective as that, you um, you kill most of the bugs on your hand. Ultimately, hand washing with soap can save your life by preventing the transmission of common and even potentially lethal diseases.